Hi everyone, this is Jenny the Jellyfish and she is one of my favorite patterns to make. I love this pattern for craft fairs or anytime you want to have a quick easy gift to give someone. It's gender neutral, it's fun, it doesn't take long to make. Um, and it's, it's just a really easy pattern. Jenny the Jellyfish is one of the patterns that I came up with a few years ago for craft fairs because I was needing a product that I could make quickly. I needed something that I could work on while I was at craft fairs and just kind of in between like the waiting time between talking to people. Um, so this was an easy pattern that I could just, all I needed was a couple of things. Uh, yarn hook some stuffing in my the eyes and a scissor to cut the yarn with which were all easy things I could take with me and I usually took with me anyways so I came up with this pattern and it's always been a really good seller for me it's the thing that I always sell out of and use the most and get the most sales from um, so I always try to have a lot of these on hand when I go to craft fairs I'm actually preparing for a craft fair right now which is why I started making these again. And I also just released a pattern collection of Beach Buddy. So they're all beach and seaside themed patterns. And Jenny the Jellyfish is one of those patterns. So I thought I would do a little video today to show you how I make her. So for this pattern, I'm gonna be using Yarn B's Soft Secret Yarn in the color Pale Aqua and a 3.5 millimeter hook. Sometimes I use a 3.25 millimeter hook, sometimes I use 3.5, sometimes I even use a 4 millimeter hook. Um, it just kind of depends on my tension that day. Sometimes I'm, t I'm working a little tighter, sometimes I'm working a little looser. 3.5 is the one that I'm most comfortable with for this pattern. Um, but you can play around with it if you want. You can even, I've made these in, um, the Yarn Bee's True Colors yarn, which is like their ultra thick jumbo yarn, and I did that with, I think, a 10 millimeter hook to make a giant jellyfish that's like the size of my coffee table, pretty much. Um, but yeah, just make sure whatever you're doing, you adjust your hook to your yarn size so that your tension is even and your yarn isn't like having big holes and the stitches showing through the the stuffing it doesn't show through the the stitches but yeah worsted weight yarn 3.5 millimeter hook um, and we're gonna start by making a magic loop magic ring also so I wrapped the yarn twice around my finger like this Insert my hook under both loops, yarn over with this working yarn and pull it through. Chain one to secure that, and then I have my magic ring. Now I'm gonna work six single crochet into this magic loop. just like that and now I'm gonna pull the loop closed so to do that you just pull in the tail yarn and you see which of these two loops get smaller then you pick up that you grab that loop and then you pull it so that you pull one loop smaller and then you pull the tail to close it all the way Okay, now you have your first round with six stitches. Now we're gonna increase our circle until we have a circle that is 48 stitches all the way around. So we're just gonna be increasing every row. So for our first row, we're gonna work two double crochet into each space. So that increases it from six to 12. One.
Now we've increased from 6 to 12. For the next round, we're going to increase to 18. So that's going to be, you do one single crochet into the, into the first space, and then increase by working two single crochet into the next. So single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, all the way around. Okay, now we have 18 stitches. We're going to keep increasing every round the same way we have been. The only difference is we're going to add one stitch between increases until we have, um, until we get to the last increase round, which will be single crochet seven, or sorry, single crochet six, and then increase. So then you'll have eight stitches per section and that'll be 48 stitches all the way around. I have all of the instructions written out and like I have all the instructions written out on my blog on a free pattern and you can use the link in the description to go get that and I also have the PDF available for this pattern in my Etsy shop, Ravelry and in my own pattern shop. I'll leave all those links down below for you. So for now, I'm just going to continue increasing until I get to 48 stitches, and then I will be back here to show you what to do next. Now that we've worked our increase rounds, we have 40 stitches around and it's time to start making the, um, the rest of the head for the jellyfish, the curved shape. So instead of increasing, now we're just going to work all the way around, um, single crocheting all the way in each stitch. Uh, no increases, no decreases, just even single crochet. And we're going to do that for 9 rounds. And you'll see after you work around or even a couple of rounds that your piece is going to start curling inwards. You can see how the edge of this piece is curling inwards now. I like this side, the smooth side, to be my outside. Um, some people prefer this side to be the outside the side where the tail is coming from, but I prefer this side. So as I work, I'm going to make sure that I end up turning my work this way so that the tail end stays on this inside part and this becomes my outside. It's totally up to you which side you prefer, but if you're trying to get the same look as I do, as I have, then you want to make sure the shiny side or like the smooth side is facing outwards. But yeah, for now you just continue single crocheting around in each round until you have nine rows, nine rounds. Okay, after you work eight rows, this is where you're at. And now we can start adding in the ruffle, the frilly edge of our jellyfish. And for that we're just gonna yarn over and work three half double crochet into the front loop only of this round. So we're only working into this front loop 
we're going to work three half double crochet into each one. One, two, three. And then we're just going to continue that all the way around. Were you just recording me? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I have my my phone is my mic. Mm -hmm. So like there's some parts that I'm I have my phone on to record me talking. Um and then some parts where I can just like have the camera and I know I'm gonna mute it. Like this. So you can see what I'm doing, but I don't have to talk. I'm gonna be done filming. Okay, so I lost audio here, so I'm just gonna voice over. Um, as you can see now, we are at the point in our in our crochet jellyfish where I've completed that round and I've made the ruffle. And you can see how nice and wavy it is from over here. Um, and right now, we, this is a good place to stop so that we can add in our safety eyes. For this pattern, I'm using 8mm safety eyes. I will include a link to them in the pattern, which is on my blog, if you want to get the same ones, but you could also skip this and do embroidered eyes or sewn on eyes if you prefer, but I like these safety eyes. So I'm just going to take one of them, I'm going to take the, the eye part of it, and just deciding here where to place it. It's usually about six stitch, six rows from our last increase round, so I'll start at that round, count down to our sixth row, and I'll just insert the eye in between two of the stitches. I'm gonna count over another five or six stitches. Uh, this doesn't have to be exactly the precise, just whatever you think looks good. So that looks pretty good to me. And now I'm just gonna use the back of the, the washer piece and I'm just going to snap it in place. So just stick it through the back of the eye and you want to make sure you press down hard so that it clicks and you want it to click as far as it can so that you have a nice tight grip on it and they're not going to come loose. One thing I like to do for this is use a pen tube, just a regular like empty pen tube and I stick the end of it which fits perfectly over the size eye and just use that to press in and it gives you a little bit more pressure from the tip of the of the pen and the and the actual like cup of the washer it gives a little more pressure for you to be able to push it further in and make that nice tight grip so yeah I do that on both you can see how much further it went down now with the pen and they do have tools for this they do have a, a really nice um, what's it called? It's called a safety eye tool. And that's really good, especially for bigger size eyes and stuff, but for smaller sizes like this, or if you don't make things with safety eyes as much, and you just wanna do it the quick and easy way, just use a pen tube. But they do have those, and I will include a link somewhere. So just giving it an extra tight, and then we can move on to the next part. Okay, so let's move on to our next row. And for that, we're going to be working into these back loops only. We worked our frill into the front loops only, and now we're going to work into our back loops only. 
and that's going to help turn the piece so we can make the flat part that closes this now. So we're going to start working our first decrease round and that is going to be um, to single crochet six and then decrease in the seventh. So to do that we're just going to insert our hook into that back loop only. You can see that it's just like the straight bar that's running all the way around. So we're going to single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then our seventh one is decrease, and we're going to just go under that first stitch under the second and we'll have three loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all three. I'm just going to repeat that all the way around this row and we should end with 42 stitches. Now we are at the end, we got our last two, and that is it. 42 stitches around. Now, that was a regular decrease stitch, um, but I do prefer to use invisible decreases, and that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the decrease rounds. For this first round, just because you're already working with one loop, it's just easier to do a regular decrease like that. But I'll show you how to work the next round. Okay, so for this round, we're going to decrease again by six. We're going to go one down, so we're going to single crochet five and then decrease in the sixth. So you want to work your first stitch into that first stitch. This is a half double crochet from the round before, or like the front half of that same stitch, really. And then this is our single crochet. You're going to be working into that first single crochet. One two, three, four, five. And then for the sixth stitch, we're gonna work an invisible decrease. And to do that, you go under the front loop of the first stitch. And then without yarning over, you're gonna go under the second loop of the next stitch, the front loop of the second stitch. So you have both loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through both of those loops. So you have two loops, yarn over again, and just pull through. So this stitch, it will make a much cleaner look than a regular decrease, and I use them for most of my decreases when I make um, me anyways. I'm going to continue all the way around, and I will get back to you once I finish this round.
Okay, now we're gonna decrease again, and we're just gonna keep working in this pattern until we get to single crochet two and decrease in the third. So we're just gonna slowly be closing this off, and then around the um, around the row where you'll have either 24 or 18 stitches, whichever you want, uh, we're just gonna stop to stuff the body of the jellyfish, and then we'll finish closing it up. So this round is going to be single crochet four and then decrease. Okay, now we're gonna decrease again, and we're just gonna keep working in this pattern until we get to single crochet two and decrease in the third. So we're just gonna slowly be closing this off, and then around the um, around the row where you'll have either 24 or 18 stitches, whichever you want, uh, we're just gonna stop to stuff the body of the jellyfish, and then we'll finish closing it up. So this round is gonna be single crochet four and then decrease. Okay, so now we have our jellyfish and I finished the decrease round up until we have 18 stitches and now I'm gonna start stuffing. So for this, I just use normal polyfill. I'm gonna just grab a ball of that and start adding it. And you wanna make sure you add it kind of like smoothly all the way around. Um, just wiggle it around, make sure the top of the dome of the jellyfish is like nice and even. Um, you can add as much as you want. If you want it to be really tight and firm, you can add more. Uh, if you want it to be a bit soft and squishier, then you can add less. Just make sure that however much you add, you're not stretching the stitches out, because that will mean you overstuffed it. And you want to kind of keep it so that like, it's got a decent amount of stuffing in it. You want it to be f pretty taut. You want it to have like a little bit of body to it, but you don't want it to be stretched out or underfilled. So 
Just play around with it until it kind of feels good to you. You can see how he's coming together. And now, now that we got our stuffing, you can see how the bottom is shaping up and now we're just gonna continue closing off this opening. And we're just gonna do that the same way we have been. Um, our next round is a single crochet one and then decrease in the next. So we'll have 12 stitches at the end of this. Okay, now for this last decrease round, we're just gonna decrease in each in each space all the way around. And then I'll show you my favorite part of this, which is the tentacles. And I love these tentacles because you can just work them like all in one piece. You, you're not breaking up the yarn. You're not having to weave in any ends. Um, well, you only have one end to weave in. Uh, and it's just super convenient. It makes this pattern a great pattern to take for on the go. I use it for craft fair, so it's easy for me to bring more yarn and just stuff some stuffing and a couple of eyes so I can make more as I need them and a lot of times I have needed to restock the jellyfish because they sell out so being able to do this in one piece and not worry about more than one end is super convenient okay so we have our last row and now this you can see that opening there we're just going to close it by inserting our hook into the next space and then just going across the hole. We're just going to go all the way across. Yarn over. Pull through. And we're just going to work a slip stitch. If I get that yarn properly on my hook. Yeah, we're just going to do a slip stitch. So that closes off the hole and our first tentacle is going to start right here. You can make your tentacles as long as you want, but personally, I like them around 26 chains long. You can make them longer or shorter if you want, but like that's a good length because then I can stretch them out a little bit and they'll be nice and wiggly, but it's totally up to you. It also depends on how um, loosely you make your chains, so that'll make a difference in the length as well. So I'm just gonna, cro I'm just gonna chain 26 now. One, two, three, Okay, here's 26. I've seen some descriptions in my, some comments from my pattern that people preferred them longer so they would do almost 30 or 40 stitches, which is totally fine, it's up to you. But I like the shorty, the shorty version and this is gonna shrink a little bit as we work our single crochets into it. But like I said, this part is totally up to you so if you wanna make them longer, go for it. So now we're just gonna single crochet in each space down this chain starting from the second. So we're going to skip this first one and we're just going to work single crochets down the line. And you want to work kind of loosely. You don't want these to be really tight and together. You want it so that they're loose enough to hang by themselves like kind of freely but also as you work you can see that they curl up. Think of how like when you first learned how to crochet and your first row was always getting curly and you kind of wondered what was going on there. It's kind of what you want for this. You want them to be curly and tentacly. So you're just gonna single crochet all the way down.
Okay, now here we are in the last stitch. I'm gonna work our single crochet and now you have the end of your chain right here. So now we're gonna anchor this down into a spot, just, just lay it flat anywhere and single crochet into a space nearby. So I'm just gonna go right here and I'm gonna, sorry, not single crochet, you wanna slip stitch into the space and that kind of just anchors your tentacle right there. Now this is the best part. This part is how you get all of your tentacles in one go. So we want to move a couple stitches over, maybe like say over here. So we're just going to slip stitch up until the next spot where we want our tentacle to go. So we're just going to insert under a stitch and a slip stitch around it. So insert your hook under a stitch, yarn over and slip stitch. Let's do like three. So you can see how we move from where this one ended to over here. We just did a couple of slip stitches right here. And we're gonna kind of work in a spiral. So now again, now that we're at the spot where we want our next tentacle, we're gonna chain 26 again. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little bit, but all we're doing here is working our chain 26, and then we're gonna turn and single crochet all the way back down that row. And you can see I'm almost done with this row right now. And then we're just gonna attach it back to the base the same way. We're gonna single crochet into that last one. If I can get it on my hook, there we go. And then again, we're gonna move to where we want that, st that tentacle anchored. So I'm gonna lay it flat right there. I like how it, how it looks right there. So I'm gonna insert my hook into a spot on the base slip stitch and pull it through. Sorry, it keeps going out of frame right there, um, but you're just inserting your hook underneath that stitch, pulling up the yarn and finishing it as a slip stitch. So we're gonna work a few slip stitches to move it to our next spot. And you can see I'm kind of working in a spiral and see like the center where we had the end of our, of our decrease rounds as a beginning and as we're working the tentacles, we're spiraling outwards. And by the end, we're gonna be closer to the like roughly rim of our jellyfish. And we're gonna end up somewhere around where my finger is now. So we only have two down and we're just gonna make a few more. I usually make nine. Um, I don't actually know if that's the right number of jellyfish tentacles they have, but I think it makes a good number for the pattern. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a few more. I'll do that off camera, but here is a sample I already have almost done. And you can see how it looks once it has all the tentacles made. And this is our last tentacle, I think. So I'm just gonna show you how I finish that up. As usual, we're gonna insert the hook, slip stitch. We're gonna do that two or three times just to really finish that off and then just pull the yarn through. So now you have a one end, and that's the first time we've cut our yarn for this entire project, and we only have that one end piece to weave in. So yeah, that's all there is to it. This is just like you just throw it on tapestry needle and weave it through like you normally would, tuck it inside and trim the excess. Um, for the tentacles, if you think that you're looking a little bit too tight, an easy way to fix that is you can just pull on them a little bit, loosen them out just by like stretching them a little bit, and it'll help them loosen out and kind of dangle a little bit more freely. And that is all for this pattern. I hope you guys liked it. This pattern is one that I use at Crafters all the time. It is my best seller. It is a pattern that is easy for me to make while I'm there because it uses very little pieces and supplies. It's just yarn, a hook, and safety eyes, all little things that I can bring with me, um, which is handy because these always sell out and I'm always sitting there making a few more, um, which if you're at Crafters is a great thing to do because it helps people see that you've made these products when you're working on something. Um, I also really just love the way that this looks. It's a great it's a great 
project for anyone in a great pattern for anyone as well. Like it just it works up quick and it's easy. You can customize it. I use um, yarn B soft secret yarn, which is a worsted weight yarn for this project and a 3.5 millimeter hook. But you can just as easily use a super bulky yarn or like an extra jumbo yarn and a 10, 12, 15 millimeter hook. Um, I actually made one that big and I had it uh, for one of my crafters and I could charge a lot more for that and it's exactly the same pattern, just more in materials and like amount of stuffing and everything. But yeah, that, that one was almost as big as my coffee table. So anyways, I hope you guys like this pattern and uh, I'll be back with another another one real soon. You can check out more patterns if you like over on my blog, thebluelephants.com. And yeah, that's all for today. Thanks so much.